My name is JP Danko. I'm a commercial photographer at BlurMediaPhotography.com and this is a review of this little monster here for DIYPhotography.net. So this is a Syrup Genie um, which is marketed as all-in-one motion control for time-lapse photography. Um, there's also a, a written review for this over at DIYPhotography.net so if you want to read the written review just Click on the, uh, the link at the bottom there for DIY photography, and that'll take you over to the written review. Um, so if you've been following DIY photography for a while, um, you'll have seen over the last little while we've posted um, quite a few really, really amazing time-lapse uh, videos on the site. And one of the sort of common themes that you'll see in those time-lapse videos is that the photographers have usually found a way to incorporate um, motion into their into their video sequences. And that's uh, where the genie comes in. Um, the guys at Syrup built this unit to basically be an all-in-one solution for time-lapse photographers to incorporate motion into their work. So it's got a built-in intervalometer. It can do uh, panning movements. It can do tilts. It can do um, linear movements on a dolly. And it can even do long distance kind of hyperlapse uh, sequences by using a cable uh, cart. So that's what the Genie is and what it does. My first impression of the Genie uh, taking it out of the box is it's really a nicely built um, piece of hardware. Um, this was built from the ground up to be a professional photographer's tool. And, you know, once you get this in your hand and you, you take a look at it, all the buttons are nicely laid out, uh, it's high quality materials, it's solid. Um, it just, it, you know that this is a professional piece of equipment. The Genie comes with a built-in 11.1 volt lithium ion battery. And initially I was actually a little concerned about that because the battery is built right into the unit. Um, you can't take it out and swap it with a spare if your battery dies. So I was concerned that if I'm out in the field running a time lapse, the battery dies. You know, I've got to take the whole unit in, charge it up, and then take it back. But uh, since then, I've had the Genie out, and I've run some pretty long um, time-lapse sequences. I've had it out all night running cable cam uh, shots, which is using quite a bit of battery to pull itself along. And I've never even come close to using uh, the full battery charge. So I think it probably has enough capacity for the needs of most time-lapse photographers. Also included in the box is the AC adapters that you'll need to charge the Genie. Um, it comes with pretty much every single AC adapter you could ever need in the world, which is kind of a, a cool thought from the guys at Syrup because, you know, they recognize that time-lapse photographers often travel quite a bit. So it's nice to know that wherever you are in the world, you'll have an AC adapter that you need to charge your Genie up. Also included, if you purchase a Genie, is a shutter release cable. So um, you have to specify if you need Nikon or, or Canon. In my case, I actually shoot both, so I had to order an extra one, but you can order those directly from Syrup. The last thing that you'll need to get started with the Genie is a ball head. So I've got my own ball head, um, but again, if you need a ball head, you can just order those, that directly from Syrup as well. So when you get the Genie, it comes pre-installed with the panoramic mount. Um, to, so to get started with it in the field, first you need a sturdy tripod. Um, I'm just going to use a, a Joby a Gorillapod here just for example purposes. Um, I don't use this for time lapse, it's just not sturdy enough to give a, a secure base. But you mount the, uh, the Genie on your tripod. It's got a little spirit level here so that you can level the genie, which is important because when you're running a time-lapse sequence, uh, especially a horizontal pan, it's important that you have the, uh, the unit perfectly level. Um, from there, you mount your ball head on the top, and then you mount your camera onto the top of your ball head. And then once you've got everything set up, uh, you're ready to program in um, your time-lapse sequence into the Genie. And it comes with three pre-programmed time-lapse sequences, one for people, clouds, and stars. So if you're new to time-lapse, uh, you can just get started with any of those uh, presets. So the last thing here to do before we're ready to go is plug in our shutter release cable, and it just plugs into the side of your camera there. 
and down to the bottom of the genie. And there you go, you're ready to program in your, um, your panoramic time-lapse movement. So once you set that and you set go, what the genie does is it, it just uh, has a controlled robotic movement around its base and it'll run your panoramic sequence uh, just like that. In addition to being able to do horizontal pans with the genie, you can also just turn the ball head on your tripod, tripod sideways and that way you can do vertical tilts uh, with the genie as well. To actually program your time-lapse sequence into the Genie, um, when you start at the opening screen, you'll have either uh, time-lapse or video. So I'm going to choose time-lapse, and then you can choose uh, one of the pre-installed uh, time-lapse sequences or new recording. And then from there, you just set your record time, uh, the uh, play time, the interval between shots, and your movement. And one of the things in the field that I found kind of difficult with the Genie is that you have to set the movement in degrees for a horizontal pan or a vertical tilt. And that can be kind of tricky to do because, you know, if you see a tree over here and a rock over there and you want to pan between them, it's kind of hard to estimate how many degrees that is. I mean, I can estimate that, you know, this is maybe 90 degrees versus, you know, a 180. But to get really specific with it, it is a little bit tricky to estimate. So I found that kind of hard to, uh, to work with. If you go into the advanced setup, um, you also have some options there for setting an HDR time lapse, or you can set an uh, ease in, ease out time. So the Genie will ramp up and then run its sequence and then ramp down at the end. One of the other interesting uh, features in the advanced setup menu is bramping or bulb ramping. And bulb ramping is typically used for time-lapse photographers to film um, big changes in light. So if you're going from night to day or day to night. Now the bulb ramping feature in the Genie, it only can ramp the shutter speed. So there's no ISO ramping and there's no support for neutral density filters either, which means that you know, your fastest shutter speed is about one tenth of a second and your slowest is, you know, usually around 30 seconds. So you've only got about eight stops of range in there with a shutter speed ramp, um, which is not nearly enough to do a full sunset or a full sunrise. And the other problem that I encountered in the field is that it's a linear ramp. So you're starting at one tenth of a second and you're ramping linearly in a straight line up to 30 seconds. Whereas the actual light doesn't change linearly um, in sunrise sunset. So in a sunrise, it's dark and it's gradually getting light and then it gets light really fast and then it gradually gets even brighter. And a sunset is the opposite where it's bright, it gets dark really fast and then gradually gets darker. So the bulb ramping feature in the Genie right now isn't really usable for those holy grail day to night, night to day uh, sequences. but I did speak to the guys at Syrup and they are planning on um, improving the bulb ramping feature with uh, future firmware, firmware releases for the Genie. So that's kind of uh, an exciting feature that's coming um, soon. And speaking of firmware upgrades, uh, the Genie has a USB slot on the side and it's a standard female USB slot. So in order to do a firmware upgrade, and they've actually released a firmware upgrade since I've had the Genie and I haven't had a chance to install it, the reason being is that you need two standard male ends on your USB cable and that's not really a standard cable, at least where I'm from. So I have to special order one of those in order to uh, run a firmware upgrade, which is you know a little bit of a pain. The last thing that I wanted to mention about programming your time-lapse sequence into the Genie is that in the main time-lapse menu, you set the record time. The playtime is calculated by the Genie based on your frame rate, so you can set that in the uh, settings menu uh, 24 or 30 frames per second or whatever you like. Um, then you set the interval and the movement that you'd like, but what you don't set in that menu is the number of frames that the Genie is going to take. So you have to know that ahead of time um, based on the interval and the record time, how many frames it needs, because if you, you know, you only have a thousand frames available on your memory card, but you need 2000 frames for to run the sequence, 
you're not going to get the full sequence recorded. Um, and it doesn't tell you how many frames until you hit start. And then it'll count down, you know, one of 1,000, two of 1,000, three of 1,000, and so on. Um, so that's just something to be aware of uh, when you're programming your time-lapse sequences in that you need to know how many frames you, you need on your memory card before you hit start. Setting up a, a live action video recording is fairly similar to setting up a time lapse, but instead of going into the time lapse menu, you go into the video menu and you'll have a couple presets in there, fast and slow, or you can just select new recording. And in the video menu, all you need to do is set your capture time, so how long the video is going to run for, and the movement. Um, if you go into the advanced settings, you can also set an ease in, ease out time. So you can uh, program the genie to sort of ramp up that movement, run in the movement, and then slow it down at the end. And you can also do that with, uh, with the time lapse sequences as, as well. Now, if you're ready to go from uh, panoramic movement to linear movement, um, you just switch the base on the genie. It comes pre installed with the panoramic base, and there's just a little tab at the back. That pops off the bottom and then you can put the uh, the linear motion base on there and it just snaps on and make sure that's locked over um, you'll notice that the linear motion base is basically just a winch and it's got a cord that comes out of either side of it so you can use this to motorize any manual dolly I'm just going to show you how it works with uh, with a dynamic perception dolly here but It'll work with um, pretty much any dolly. So what you do is you take your genie and you attach it to your dolly cart, and then you run the cord down to the ends of the dolly, and the genie comes with these two neat little uh, clamps that you just Velcro on to the end of your dolly here. You run the cord down, and then you uh, secure it in the clamp, and then what the genie will do is it'll robotically inch itself away along the cord um, from end to end uh, for the run of your dolly. And if you're doing live action video, it's the same thing where the genie will use the cord to pull itself up and down your dolly um, so that you can do nice, smooth, um, linear movements with either uh, time lapse or with live video. Programming your time-lapse or live-action video sequence into the Genie for linear motion is pretty much the same as how you program for, uh, for a pan or a tilt. Um, but instead of panning, uh, programming in the pan in degrees, you program in the length of your linear movement in feet or, or in meters. So in this case, uh, this dolly is four feet long, so to run from end to end, I would start at you know one end, program in a movement of four feet, and the genie would uh, pull itself along the rope down to the other end. At this point, you might realize that because the genie uses uh, a cable to pull itself along linearly for linear motion, there's not really a limit to how long this rope can be. So if instead of using a, a dolly cart and dolly rails, we could replace those with a cable cam cart and cables, um, we can do some really long distance cable cam sequences. And Syrup actually sells um, a rope for use with a cable cam. Uh, this is 100 meter long. I think that's the longest one that they have. So that's a 300 foot run. So here's a, a cable, an example of a cable cart. Um, so I built this for use with the Genie, and I did some cable cam sequences out in the field with it. If you want to see uh, how this was built and how it was uh, installed and run out in the field, just click the link here and it'll take you over to DIYphotography.net for the uh, tutorial on how to put this sucker together. To wrap up, I'm just going to finish with a few of my thoughts on my experience shooting uh, cable cam footage with the Genie. There's some definite advantages to shooting cable cam shots, especially if you're interested in shooting live action video, because you can do those, you know, interesting long sweeping uh, cable cam shots with live action video and they'll look just amazing. Um, now compared to traditional time lapse with a hyperlapse where you take your tripod and you move it incrementally, um, the big advantage of doing a cable cam hyperlapse is that 
there's a lot less variation in your frames frame to frame than you get with a hyperlapse because you know as you're moving your tripod there's quite a bit of movement there no matter how uh, similar you try to make each frame whereas with a cable the cable does bob around and move a little bit but frame to frame your footage is is fairly stable right out of camera now having said that you'll notice that the cable cam sample footage in this video is just a touch shaky and the reason for that is just after effects warp stabilizer had a real big problem stabilizing this footage for some reason um, i think it has to do with uh, you know i thought it would look really cool to have um, a long dramatic sweep over the rocky beach in the foreground and then have the lake and the, the sunset in the background but when that goes into after effects and warp stabilizers trying to stabilize that footage um, it couldn't pick up any tracking points in the water which is bobbing up and down and also the horizon was fairly indiscriminate so um, that's why there's still a little bit of jitter in this footage I feel like um, it probably can be corrected if somebody is a a little bit more um, efficient with uh, After Effects than I am, but I think that's just something to be aware with, aware of if you do plan on shooting cable cam footage is to make sure that you have some good reference points in your frame. And the other thought that I that I had shooting long distance cable cam footage is I did a couple 200, 300 foot long runs. And the most photos that I shot in one of those runs was about 800 frames. And looking back on it, um, for one thing, it, the finished video, it's too fast. The sweep is not long and as, as long and dramatic as I would have liked. So I needed to shoot more frames. And the secondary benefit of that, of shooting more frames, is that I would have had, it would have been a easier to stabilize the video from frame to frame the more frames that we have. So, just a couple things to keep in mind if you do plan on shooting cable cam footage with your Serp Genie. The last question that you'd probably like answered is, with a retail price of around $800 US, is the investment in a Serp Genie um, something that's right for you? And I think the answer to that question really comes down to if you're a professional photographer or a professional filmmaker or somebody that's you know really serious about the craft of time-lapse video then I think there's no question that the Serp Genie is a professional piece of gear and I think its biggest strength is its versatility that ability to you know use it as an intervalometer to do uh, pans and tilts and linear movements on a dolly and long-distance ca cable cam shots there's a lot of different um, options packed into that one unit and I know personally in my own photography, you know, I'm pretty excited about getting out in the field and trying to think of new and different ways that I can incorporate um, different motion uh, through the genie into my own work. So I think there's probably a lot of photographers that fit into that same category. So yes, I would definitely recommend the, uh, the Serp Genie to a friend. Thanks for watching. If you'd like a little bit more information about the Syrup Genie, uh, just click the link here to head over to DIYphotography.net uh, for the written review over at the blog. And while you're at it, you might as well click the subscribe button to subscribe to more DIY photography videos on our YouTube channel. So once again, I'm JP Danko, and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.